Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's review, I'll be going over a very special fragrance from a very beloved house of mine. So if you're curious to know more about that, don't go away. So welcome back everyone. As always, before we start the review, just quickly, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you can do so just by clicking the bell and the subscribe button down below. So that way when I do upload a new video, you'll be the first to know about it. So today's video, if you haven't already guessed, which is in the title, this is from a very beloved house of mine from a Turkish house, and they're based out of Istanbul. They're a really fantastic house. They make exquisite fragrances. This is going to be from their, basically their centerpiece fragrance or their kind of their flagship fragrance in their collection. So this one is Nishane's Nef, or Nefs. So Nishane Nefs is their flagship fragrance, their most, I guess you can say beloved fragrance from just a overall um, collecting standpoint. They really put a lot of time and effort and a lot of thought went into making this fragrance. It's something that I think is not going to be for everybody because A, the price point is really, really high and B, if you're not someone who loves Orientals and Gourmands, this may not be for you. But this is a fragrance that was launched in 2019 the perfumer behind this was Chris Maurice, who is a really loved perfumer. I love his work. He's a, he does great stuff. The bottle design is outstanding. It's a very unique bottle in the terms of Nishane because it has um, a unique pattern. It's all their fragrance, all their fragrances, their bottles are melt. We're very well made. It's a heavy cap and it's got this very unique, almost like this see-through, I don't know if you can see it, mar uh, maroon um, inlay in the back. Now, what do we get with Nishane's Nefs? Well, first of all, talking about the price point, retail, this one goes for 571 US dollars. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later in terms of price points, uh, but this one is for me uh, top three, I would say top three easily in my Nishane collection. Now, let's spray it. I have to remind myself what I get. I've been wearing this one all day, so I haven't, I haven't smelling it throughout the day. I've been wearing a sample of this for the last few weeks, I just picked up this bottle, I just got it today. So I've been wearing a sample of it for the last few weeks and getting a sense of how it feels. Okay, so right off the top, and I'm not gonna lie, there's a very synthetic quality about it. It doesn't smell really, really natural. It smells somewhat synthetic. So right away you have this, um, this fig, this lactonic sort of honeyed sweet fig that's combined with this saffron that's a little bit um, bittersweet and floral mixed with this honey. Now the honey here is giving sort of an animalic quality to it, sort of floral, but also animalic. It has, it has an anim animalic component to it. And as it starts to get into the more of that top, it also has violet, which is powdery and airy. And then as it starts to dry down even more, you have sage, which is peppery, which is, so it gives it sort of an aromatic nuance. Now, this does last for about, I would say, 10, maybe 20, 20 or so minutes in the top. And then you got, then it starts drying down. And as it starts drying down, that's where this one really starts shining for me. Because the top, the opening for me, isn't a wow factor. I think it could have been done a little bit smoother, a bit more clean or rounded. So as it starts drying into the mid, you have this rose combined with geranium. And the rose here, is pretty big, it's pretty dominant with geranium. It's kind of, um, it's amorous and romantic and it's combined with other notes. So it's it's not just a floral fragrance because in the mid, it's it starts to really develop into this oriental fragrance. Uh, yeah. So as it starts to get even more into the dry down, you have this osmanthus, which is sort of, sort of sensuous, it's a bit luxurious. Um, and it's also paired with uh, jasmine, which is floral and green with nutmeg. Now the nutmeg is paired with the saffron, making it very redolent and aromatic. So I think you get a little bit of that in the, in the mid, this aromatic component, but it starts giving a kind of a floral nuance in the mid. So it starts bouncing off those sweeter top notes, which is unique because usually you don't start off with very sweet top notes, but this is an oriental. So it's kind of, that's how it's structured from a skeletal perspective. 
Now, the bass for me, the bass for me is my favorite part of this fragrance because in the bass, you get an oud. Now, the oud here is by no means a centerpiece or a center point of the fragrance. It is very, very slight. It's sort of creamy, almost buttery. And there's a whiskey accord, which is almost like chocolatey and deep. It's really, really, really nice. Now, it's, it's chocolate mixed with vanilla and amber. Now, there's no chocolate note in here, but the whiskey's kind of giving this almost this chocolatey feel. And paired with this vanilla and amber, that combination when they're married together gives a sort of um, cozy, vanillic vibe. And I really, really love it. You also have um, gergeron balsam that's combined with cedar that gives it almost a woodsy kind of warm component to it. And the gorgeon balsam is a resin, so it has this kind of warm, sweet, um, woodsy accord that's balanced out with that cedar. And it starts getting to this oriental, woodsy, uh, very almost gourmandish base, which I really, really love. And it has a slight cinnamon component to it at the end where it starts to give it also a more of an oriental base. There's a touch of leather, just a touch of leather in the base, but it's very, very slight. It's just, it's meant to give it depth and complexity. It's meant to give it sort of a balance because you don't want to have too sweet mixed with too floral or too redolent or aromatic. You have to have that a little bit of that masculinity of leather, that raw feel from leather to give it really what's its, its density. This fragrance is an absolute beast mode fragrance. It has lasted, I sprayed it on when I got it this afternoon. It's been projecting for the last like four hours easily. Um, outside of the cold weather, it's really shines. It's an absolute beauty in the cold weather. And I can see this one really becoming a very long lasting fragrance. I would say this one really should be worn. I would say not should, I would say recommend it to be worn in a colder setting, whether it's winter or fall, colder summer evenings or spring. Um, evenings, things like that. Because of its components, because of its oriental gourmand components, I don't think they should be worn in a warm setting. But do as you please, guys. These are your fragrances. Do what you want. Men and women can wear this totally unisex, and it does give off a, quote of an, a sort of an older feel. Not older, meaning only someone of a certain age should wear this, but it has a certain maturity about it, a certain sophistication that I think lends itself to an older audience. I would wear this one. I can wear this one dressed down or dressed up. It does, it can go both directions. I definitely will be wearing this one in a more dressier occasion. I can't wait to wear this one when the world starts opening back up because it really is, um, in the base is where I really love it. In the top, I'm kind of eh. So I do think it's really um, a beautiful oriental gourmand fragrance. Um, would I pay retail for this one? No, I wouldn't. It's a 50 ml and it's retailing for $570. That's like 12 to 13 bucks per ml, which is really expensive. If you can find it on the Facebook groups, if you can find it on discounters, grab it. Because if you do like this fragrance genre, I think you will love it. So that is my review of Nishane's Nefs. I would love to know guys below in the comments, have you tried it and what are your thoughts? And if you haven't tried Nefs, do you wanna try it? And also I'm really curious to know what's your favorite Nishane? I have others that I love like B612 and Ombre Calabria. So this one sits in the top three for me, but I would love to know your thoughts as well. So that's it for my review, everyone. I really do appreciate you sticking around and watching and supporting my channel. It means a lot to me. As always, stay safe and take care of each other. Bye everyone.